Oh, hello. Yes, thank you. Okay, first of all, I'm very sorry to be late. Um, I was stuck in traffic and I have to come from all the way down south, all the way down in uh, almost Belgium, so excuse me for that. Yeah, almost from South Africa, so just around the corner. So, okay, but we're a bit of a uh, bit of a rush, so I'm just gonna go through this. Uh, I already saw some familiar faces, so I don't know who already saw this session before. I think you have, you did. It's probably the same session, so you're gonna have a bad time probably. But maybe you think of thought of some questions meanwhile, and you can hook in. So, okay, <laughs> okay, I'm counting on you. Come on. First off, who is this guy? Well, that's me. Uh, my name is Gerald Slash. I've been uh, working uh, with uh, with Chemnitz for uh, some while now, and there I am, uh, a senior developer on the mobile division. So I'm working with uh, mobile applications on mobile applications and everything that has to do with it, especially Xamarin. Um, and besides that, I have my own company um, with which I'm trying to find that one million dollar app. So don't so that I don't have to do this stuff anymore. Um, no. <laughs> um, there are some 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 uh, methods to get in touch with me. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm noticing I'm a bit tired, so I'm searching for words sometimes. Um, they'll be there afterwards, so follow me. And uh, I've been blogging about Xamarin a lot, so if that's what you you're interested in, uh, go check it out. Um, I'm also a Xamarin certified developer, so I know what I'm talking about. Yes. Oh, there's a woman with cookies. Yes. Um, if there are any questions, just raise your hand or shout and whatever. Uh, just do it right then and right there. We can hook in and see where it goes from there. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about is continuous integration and continuous delivery, um, especially for Xamarin apps. Um, it, it, it's more general than that. You can apply these things to other applications as well. Um, but this will have some things very special for uh, Xamarin. Um, so what would you want this? Um, well, I don't know about you, but I get a tester at my desk and he says, hey, I need a new uh, version right now. Or you get someone from management and he says, hey, well, I have a demo for the critical demo. And if we don't do this right, then the client is going to walk away. And well, it's always in a time that, that that's not suitable for you. So you always keep pulling your hair out, doing the same process over and over again. So that's something. I'm, I'm a developer. I don't know how about you. but if I have to do things more than once, I want to automate it. So that's that's kind of where, where this is coming from. Um, if you want to deliver your app to the end user, to your test users, whatever, um, you don't want to do every step all the time. Because if one besides communication, people also suck at doing things the same thing over and over. So you don't want to do that. Um, so this is the uh, the agenda for uh, for this session. Um, continuous integration. I've split it into two parts: continuous integration, continuous delivery. I'm probably going to mix them up because they're really close together, especially in VSDS, which I'm going to talk about. Um, then there are some alternatives. Um, I'm going to uh, focus on VSDS, all of the Microsoft things, um, because well, Microsoft is buying everything, so it's hard not to. Um, but there are some alternatives uh, which you can use. Um, and then some lessons learned from, uh, yeah, implementing this. Also, I will be using uh, delivery and deployment, uh, both probably. Um, technically, they're something different because delivery is uh, continuously delivering them to the actual devices uh, in, by customers or, or something. And deployment is just that you're continuously deploying it somewhere. It doesn't matter if it's accessible from the outside or whatever. It's just proof that you deploy it. Um, if you're talking in terms of apps, it's probably um, more, more or less the same thing because you're going to push it to some delivery mechanism, whether it's a hockey app or the app store or whatever. Um, so there, there isn't really deployment in, in the app world. Um, I will be demoing with uh, a pet project. Uh, it's called Boatshoppy. For the English users, it's not just fun as the Dutch speakers. Um, which is a, a simple application um, at the office. There's always this one guy who goes uh, grocery shopping at the beginning of the week, and we have to make a yeah. Do you see? <laughs> uh, 
and we were making lists and he had to go uh, up and down the stairs and what do you want what do you want and he forgot one so we were growing tired of that and we were thinking okay we're a software development club we can make this better so we developed an app or we're still developing it because as a good developer we're pushing it back all the time but we developed this app and you can actually it uses an uh, api from uh, the supermarket all the time um, so you can get the actual product that you want, add them to a cart. There's a shopping list for for everyone, and this one guy goes out. He ticks off all the messages, uh, all the all the groceries, and he never forgets anything, and it's awesome. So that's basically it. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to see it. It's just so you know what I'm talking about. It's a very simple app, uh, written in Xamarin and Gremlin forms, uh, so it works on Android, iOS, uh, Windows Phone, not so much. Um, <laughs> because nothing is using, no one is using it. So, <laughs> um, and it's it's, it's it has a simple web API behind it with a with a MSS SQL database. So it's not not really that interesting. Um, so if we're going to take a step back and look at what Xamarin is, they have this whole features, uh, this whole feature set, this whole tool suite um, um, with which you can build apps. And they say themselves, it's a better way to build, test, and monitor. So um, they have, have put together this, so this whole pipeline, uh, starting with uh, the development platform, so a tool set, an IDE, uh, now integrated in, in Visual Studio, of course. Uh, they also have something called Test Cloud. Uh, I'm going to show you a tiny bit of it. Um, and Xamarin Insights, which is already gone uh, because it has been assimilated by Hockey App. Uh, which is kind of a similar solution uh, which Microsoft bought earlier. Um, so today I will basically be talking on, more about the integration part there and the monitoring a little bit. Starting with continuous integration. Um, as a developer, what you want is to deliver great apps with good quality. So how do you want to do that? That's because gathering feedback uh, as soon as possible. Um, if something is wrong, you want to know. You want to know now. You don't want to know when uh, the, the customer has it in his hands and he's saying, oh my god, this isn't working. What garbage? Go away. So you want to know it as soon as possible, especially when you're working in a team. Uh, if you're working just by yourself, you uh, know if it's working or not, then maybe you just uh, it doesn't build on another machine. But, but OK, that, that's something you can live with. But if you're working in a team, then you need to know if your code plays nicely with the team, uh, with the code that other people are checking in as well. Um, so the way to do that is with continuous integration. You just set up a machine. Um, in this case, VSDS. It's all hosted online. It's great. Um, and you check in your code there, and it automatically goes building and checks uh, with, with the code that, that's already on there. So people can have checked in code already there. And it's going to see if your code, which you have checked in, is working with codes from other uh, developers in your team. Um, so that's a great way to, to detect if you've forgotten a file. Uh, sometimes if you're using Visual Studio, it doesn't pick up that you added a new file, so you're forgetting to commit it. And then uh, everything stops working. It works on my machine, but it doesn't work everywhere else. Um, another thing that you can do is uh, also automatically run um, unit tests, tests, if you want, um, right then and there. So you can gather feedback from that already uh, to see if your program is working as you would expect. Um, that is, if you have unit tests, of course. So like I mentioned before, Microsoft has been uh, buying a lot of company and techniques and, and, and whatnot. Um, but they already started with, with something great themselves, which is TFS. Uh, it's TFS, sorry. Which is now called a VSTS, which is the online variant of it. Um, it's totally free for up to five users, I think. Um, and if you're using MSDN of some sorts, then those don't count towards the five. So we've had, we have the whole company running on, on a free account uh, because we all have MSDN licenses, free account. But uh, yeah, th that's, that's awesome. Um, uh, it doesn't really add something to Git, um, but you now have a choice since two months ago uh, that you can use the traditional um, T 
TFS uh, source control thing or Git because it's really popular, of course. Uh, the thing with Git is that it's more open, so you can create a um, integration with with another uh, system. You can log into VSDS, uh, pull your pit re Git repository, and and work with your code from from some other solution. Yeah, but if you do that, then what is the advantage of doing also VSDS by not other? <laughs> okay, there's a few people who can just come up here and tell the rest. Um, um, I'm getting to that because if you want to work with alternatives of, of some of these solutions, then Git is preferred because if you're using a traditional um, TFS uh, a source control thing, it's it's not so open. You can't. It's it's harder to get your code from there. So if you want to use Test Ferry, which we will talk later on, um, that's not a really good example. There, uh, if you use Bitrise, which is uh, uh, which can also automatically do builds for you, um, it can check out the the Git repository, but it cannot check out your TFS repository. So yeah. Um, but if you're or if you're planning to use just TFS and, and everything that comes with it, then then you're fine with whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, but Git is gaining more and more popularity, so it's probably a safe bet that they are going for that. Um, Xamarin. They bought Xamarin, so they now have everything in store. What what you just saw on the other slide, they have everything now for themselves. They even cut off the IDE. Uh, Xamarin uh, Studio, they just want you to use uh, Visual Studio, and that's it. Um, yeah, they already did. Uh, at least for the Windows part. For Mac, you can still use Xamarin Studio, but yeah. for Windows, okay. it's dead. Yeah. Um, they also bought Hockey App, which is a solution for mostly distribute. So. Distributing apps, um, so it goes outside of the app stores. Normally, you would have to deliver your app to the app store or the Google Play Store, and they will uh, distribute it for you. With Hockey App, you can go around that, uh, circumvent all the review process and that kind of thing, and uh, deliver apps uh, straightly to your to your end users. Uh, what they're going to add to that is uh, more of the application insights you already have in Azure to Xamarin Insights, which also does uh, monitoring of your app. So you can raise custom events in your code. You can say, hey, a user has clicked this button. Uh, he did this, he did that. And more useful is uh, if the app crashes, you, it automatically sends the error reports, including full stack traces, et cetera, back to you. And you can check out what's going wrong even before the user knows it. Does that also work for iOS? So, yeah. so if you do not Um, yes and no. Uh, it's 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 working uh, on the. You can they in, in, in iOS devices they also have this uh, MDM mobile device management uh, certificates things. Uh, so it works like that. You have to install a certificate from them, uh, saying that they are a a, a trusted uh, source, etc. And then you go, just go into the the web portal and you can say, hey, I want to download this app, and then it's okay. Um, so VSTS, I mentioned it's free. It's awesome. It's much more than versioning. Uh, like Martin already said, you can also do your work items. You can do, well, automatic building, as you can, we'll see in a little bit, um, and, and, and much, much more. And now it's very extensible because they've added a marketplace. So uh, you can, for, for, for the, the crazy things, you can download some plugin. And uh, they even released, like a few weeks ago, uh, a paying model for it. So you can now actually earn money from making extensions uh, for the marketplace. So that's, that's really cool. Uh, there's a lot out there already, which is really useful. And it does everything a on-premise TFS server does, uh, and maybe, maybe even better, uh, at least sooner, because updates to VSTS are rolled out immediately, and TFS is on a, a quarterly, is that a thing, quarterly uh, uh, cycle. So yeah, VSTS, I think, is going to get big.
there's just one thing. They forgot to add a Mac. Um, if you have done some app development for iOS, you know that a Mac is required. You cannot do without. So there are two options here. You can supply your own Mac Mini like we did on the, in the office. There's just one Mac Mini there with some Xamarin commercial going on there. And it just has two cords. It has the power cord and the network cord, so you don't need anything else. Maybe TeamViewer, that's, that would be nice. Um, but it can just sit there, and it just connects to VSDS. Uh, you just install an, an agent daemon on it, and it just waits for request. Uh, whenever you want to build something, it does that for you. Um, it, it, it's not really that slow, depending on your internet connection, of course, because everything is going back and forth. But it's, it's kind of OK. Um, another solution is Mac and Cloud, which is basically the same, but they uh, made a business model out of it, and they have this big room with a pallet of Mac Minis, probably, and because it's forbidden to run it virtually, so they have to have physical devices everywhere. Um, and but but you you had the prices are pay per use or or thirty dollars per month or something. Yeah, really? No. I don't have any. You have to pay 30, uh, you have, but initially you have to uh, pay 30 dollars. You get 30 hours or hmm. building. Per, per month or so just. Month, okay, just, just whenever month. you like. So okay. You, um, and you, can, you know that they are starting because there's not a nice portal to see how many hours you have uh, used it. But sending an email, uh, they are probably uh, five times for you use per hour. And, um, Okay, so uh, another pro tip, because you can use only one uh, external agent on VSTS, the free version at least, um, and, and I have my own separate account uh, on VSTS for my personal pet project things, and we have the corporate one, um, but you can just add uh, two agents on your Mac, so you can actually service two or which, whichever, uh, how many you like, uh, with, with one Mac. So let's have a look at how that looks in VSTS. Um, for the people that haven't seen it yet, it looks like this. Um, this is the, the uh, general dashboard. And if you then go in here, for the projects we're working on, you get this nice dashboard. And you already see some. Uh, building graphs going on here, uh, which which gives you some information about the quality of your builds, uh, how high, how long the build has take, taken, and the color says if it's uh, green, it's it's succeeded. If it's orange, then not so much. Maybe some tests fail, and red just means you fucked up. Excuse my French. Uh, already here, there are some, some, let's get this out of the way. You can go to the marketplace, browse, manage extensions. You can do some stuff here. Um, you see the hockey app widget. It doesn't do very much, but provide you with some uh, shortcuts to it. Um, you can, can make this whatever, look whatever uh, kind you want. Um, for now, we're going to the build and release, if you do go do this at home, which you all will when you go home. 
And yeah, this, this maybe looks a little different because I, for some reason, have been chosen to uh, get the uh, preview version. Um, this were two separate tabs, the build and release tab. So it, it may look a bit different, but in general, it's, it all works the same. So let's go to builds here. That's basically the, the integration uh, part. Um, oh, I have to note I'm not per se a big fan of the new interface. Um, and here you, you see an overview of your the build definitions. Um, every automated build is based on a build definition. Um, so here you can create a new one. Let's not do that. Let's just go into an existing one, iOS. CI, continuous integration. So it builds every time I check in code. Um, here you see another summary. I don't know why. Uh, let's edit this one. So here we see the actual build definition. It's not really exciting, I see. Um, build definition consists of um, build steps, which you can add here. You can see it in the left column. It's, it's just one for this iOS solution. Um, when you're creating a new build definition, let's do that. In fact, you can choose from a template, just like you would expect from a Microsoft product. You have a lot of templates, and you can just choose the right one, and it provides you with some steps already. So let's just, you can see, you can also do an Xcode, so really Objective-C or Swift. Um, it also states that you need a Mac OS build agent. They don't provide that for you. Um, Let's just go with the Android one. And you can see that you have, if you use Git, you can choose which repository, which branch. And you can here tick a box and say, OK, I want to do this continuous, continuously. Um, you also have some possibilities to get it from GitHub or, or other external sources. So there's, there's a lot of options here. Um, if I would create, I would just get a, go to a screen which looks like this editing. Um, but I've already customized this a little bit. So here you can add whatever steps you like. If you need to restore some NuGet packages first, you can do that. Uh, you can, uh, on the right side, there's always some configuration options. So you can do it for this solution. You can uh, specify some, some other NuGet.config if you use um, uh, your own repositories, which are not accessible from everywhere. And, and you can do a lot more. And, and per step, you can do some, some stuff here. Um, you see I have disabled the Activate Xamarin license because now it's free, so it's not activating anymore. It doesn't need to. Um, and here is the actual build happening. Um, so if we just trigger this now, we can do it manually as well. Uh, keep a new build. And then you get some, some other options if you would like to. But I would just run a lease build, so that's OK. Um, it's actually not quite that hard. Um, you see that this is just the build output you would have in your output window in Visual Studio normally. So this this just goes running and, and passes, hopefully. Um, if you would want to add a Mac build agent, um, let me see. Yeah, but that's all the way down south near Belgium, you know. Uh, <laughs> but it's not that hard. I can show you. I can show you. Uh, yeah, it's it's. You just go into your Mac Mini, or this is a Mac machine, so it should work here as well. Um, and you go to the the configuration cog wheel here, and probably our best bet here is uh, let's do it in the same screen. It doesn't matter. The agent Q. Um, and here you, you can set up all kind of queues. Um, VSTS provides you with a hosted build option, which is just Azure machines that they provide with, with, with some configuration. Like you said, making cloud, they have a specific .NET version with all kinds of preloaded stuff. Um, and you can create your own queues with, with a lot of build agents running here if you want to, um, if you're paying for it. If you have the free version, you can just add one. Um, and actually, if we're looking, looky, looky, looky. Hey, new queue. Where did they? Maybe it's up one higher. Um, 
Oops. Yeah, here it is. OK, so you need to be uh, on the, the, the VSDFs level, not a project level for this. You need to go into the settings, agent pools. Um, and you can then see here, download agent. Uh, if you do this on a Mac and you open this, it will give you here the download option. It already sees you're on a Mac. It just says download, and you just do this, and it runs. That's it. Um, yeah, actually, it knows itself because uh, if a uh, build agent reports to VSTS, it also reports what capabilities it has. And if you're building an iOS uh, application, it specifies some uh, capabilities that it needs. And if it doesn't find any build agents uh, that can do it for you, it will say, hey, I don't have any build agents to do this. Um, or it just goes building, and then it picks out the one that can do it for you. OK. Whoosh, whoosh. Um, so this is the, the Android CI, iOS CI. Uh, you also have the API backend here. Uh, so, like I said uh, earlier, it, it doesn't really matter what, what kind of application you do, actually. This is a little bit, a little bit more extensive one. Uh, builds, it also has some tests, apparently, and then copies the artifacts. Artifacts are the, uh, the bits that, that come out of your build. Uh, so the, the executables or the, the .ipa file for an iOS application or the .apk file for an uh, Android application. That that is the the, the term artifact. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later about that. Um, then you have some other options here. Uh, well, the repository I've covered that. Uh, fun thing is variables, so you can work with variables. Uh, you can see here uh, if you want to be allowed to edit them at um, um, runtime. So if you queue a new build, you'll see that I get all these four options. I get them here as well. Um, if you Untick this box, you won't. And with this, you get some extra flexibility. You can 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 give them uh, to another step if you want, and you can have some flexibility in there. Also, this is very handy for using sensitive uh, stuff, because if you, I don't know, there isn't one here. If you have some field which which re requires a password, uh, it will just be plain text here. Uh, password box or not, it doesn't care. Um, so here with variables, you can uh, enter it here. Now it's a, a plain text box, but when I click this almost invisible padlock here, uh, you'll see it turns into a uh, password box, and it's it's not readable for anyone else but you. Uh, not even you, but you know what's there. Um, another uh, uh, important thing is the triggers. So if you've created this build definition and checked the box there, it will continuous integrate. So it will build every time that you check in code, which is probably what you want for at some level. Um, we made a rookie mistake by uh, adding the CI trigger and then um, making the, the, delivering that to Hockey App, and Hockey App create a beta version and set the beta version to deliver it to us. So every time someone checked in code, we got a beta version. So we're up to 200 something now already. Um, that's not what you want. I can tell you that now already. Um, so you want to create a, and there's not really a, 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 a B way to set up. It's, it's all just how your process is, is, is in the company or whatever. Just we've now we've created a, a CI build, uh, which, which builds and let us know if, if that's not working. Uh, we have a nightly build, so it builds one every night, which will actually result in a beta new beta version, which get delivered to us. Um, we also have a test cloud run. Um, we also had that one in between. But if you have some good test cloud, for the ones who don't know what test cloud is, um, that's a solution by Xamarin, which allows you to upload your app uh, to the test cloud. Um, and they will then um, run your application on a actual visual device. Physical, I have to say, visual as well. Um, and they will run the test for you, the test you have defined yourself. But it, it can be a long process if you have some devices. You can do it on any number of devices, uh, any combinations, whatever. 
um, but but it can be a lengthful process. So you don't want to have that in, in, in your CI as well, because then it's going to take hours if you have some extensive testing going on. So, but there's there's no no one way to do this. It's just a matter of choice. Um, okay, so a little bit back to just quickly to the build steps here. Uh, this does some some things, but you can also there there's no good thing here. It'll, depends on which requirements you have. If you go into these steps, you see Docker publish, which is deprecated, so don't use it. Uh, you have some some Android things, uh, Gradle, Grunt, I don't know things I've never seen. Uh, version assemblies that that's kind of useful, uh, and that's just the build one. There's there's much more, so you can archive, so you can create zips, unpack zips, go to Azure. There's you can do whatever stuff you want. Um, and if you don't see it, you can check the marketplace, and, and there's probably something for you there as well. I've even seen some fart apps as extensions in there already, so totally covered there. OK, so that's, that's integration. Now for deployment. See, it's going to mix up already, because it was delivery in the other slide. Um, <laughs> So now we get feedback from our building. Uh, we know if things go wrong or right, and they usually go more wrong than right. Uh, but now we're going to take it a step further, and we're also going to deliver it to our end user, to our testers, or whatever. Um, right now, we have some process at Chemdit, which, which they, the tester can just request his own uh, new version. So we have buildable code in our repositories, and you can just say uh, to our uh, release definition, it's called here. Um, and he can just say, okay, I want a new release now, and he can pull it off there himself. He gets the artifact, and he can just set it up in his machine and go do whatever he wants. So that's awesome. For apps, that's a little bit harder because you have to normally go through the app stores and that kind of thing, um, and, and, and devices are out there. They usually have bad internet connections or, or whatever. There's all kinds of variations and things, especially if you're using Android. Um, so there's there's all kinds of things to, to keep in mind there. Uh, also here it counts, you get early feedback. So um, where we got early feedback in a technical matter when, with building, now you get early feedback from your user, from your testers, and they say, hey, this is supposed to be red, or hey, this isn't working, or whatever. Um, also, it's more visible to end users and management. If you're using like agile methodologies, um, you have to produce versions in, in each print or whatever, uh, and you want This guy who worked at Happy Pancake, which you probably, I didn't know it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he told a story about uh, how each, they were working with Git, and each branch just resulted in a, uh, a production uh, environment. So they had this, this um, mechanism in place which would route 90% of all traffic to the, the regular production site, which was great, the master branch. Uh, but 10% was just for experimenting by developers. I could just wake up one morning and think, hey, everything has to be pink and unicorns. So I implement that, and just 10% of all the users would go there, and you could just play with it and see what, what kind of uh, effect it has. And if it was great, then management would come down and say, oh, you're doing great, and else not so much. But that's really cool that as a developer, you have so much freedom, and, and you depend so much, and you rely so much on the the... the uh, things that you've implemented here, delivering it just to your user, that, that you can experiment directly without all kinds of people having to decide about it. Um, also, it gives you the advantage to quickly respond to change. So um, if, if, if some competitor steps up and say, hey, I'm going to make a, a copy of your app and uh, do it better, then you can, I don't know, radically do some other stuff. Uh, because you have this, this very quick spinning wheel um, in which you can, can deliver new versions. Um, I don't know, in the, the iOS App Store, you have 
I think the Facebook app really states it because we're delivering new versions every two weeks or something. So you, you can see that they have these things in place. I hope they have. Uh, which also gives you more uh, place for innovation. Um, yeah, this is basically what I just said earlier. Um, not really, it hooks into what I said earlier. Um, doesn't mean continuous deployment doesn't mean that you're going to deploy to production. Uh, that, 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 that's a requirement. Uh, I think Amazon does like 50 uh, 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 like every day, and there there are examples of companies who do it even more often. Uh, but it it doesn't have to. Uh, it's it's just proof, and and you can assure yourself that you can deploy it if you want to, but you don't actually have to. Okay, so what do you need for it? Well, you need some kind of app or something to deploy. That's that's the first. Uh, you need continuous integration. Actually, if you're using VSDS, you need continuous integration. You can't have a release definition without a um, build definition. So you, you really need it. Um, in case of apps, you need Hockey App. Like I said, they're really good at distributing apps outside of the App Store. Um, and it does, does some more things the other app stores don't. So I'll get back to that. Oh, actually, I'm getting to it now. Um, so for iOS, you have the App Store. You have the Play Store um, by Google. And the marketplace, is it still called like that, from Microsoft? They also have beta programs, but they are limited. They don't have the same functions, um, especially the iOS one. It's not really that extensive. Um, and if you want to have external users test your app, you have to go through a review process as well. So you can wait days before you can deliver a new version to your users. That's usually not something you want. Um, the Play Store actually has some light feature. Um, it has A-B testing in place, so you can say, OK, I want this percentage of my users to get this version first, and the rest to get that, and you can find out what works. Um, not really sure about the Microsoft one, actually. Because no one's using it anyway. <clears throat> um, so release definitions. I can talk. Um, it's very similar to build definitions. You can actually release right from your build definition if you want to. You can literally use the same steps in your build definition as in your release definitions. Uh, there's only one big advantage you have from release definitions, and that you can set up some kind of chain of command. Um, you can have people sign off on a release, so you can first set it to your tester. Um, he can say, okay, it looks good, you know, set it to the next environment. Uh, um, and there you can do some automated tests, some load testing or something. Uh, and if that passes, it can be put to production all automatically. I'm not sure what's going. Okay, let's have a quick look at that first. Um, so like I said, in the old version, these were two separate things. They are still now, but they're in the same menu for some reason. Ooh, there was the internet. That would really suck. Din, din, din. Could not be joined. No. Or you're just here stuck. See me play this game. Ha ha. No, okay. Not really. This working. OK, so here we go. Um, release dashboard. So it looks a bit different, but yet quite the same. Um, here you also see the release definitions. Uh, uh, 
uh, with some status if, if it uh, was deployed right and when that was. Um, so, but if we go into one, the iOS one is interesting, I think. Edit, it looks different for some reason. Okay, so as you can see, this, this part over here, app and write, it looks, it looks exactly the same as the build definition. Um, and like I said, you can literally use the same build steps as with your build definition. So you could use, just put it in your build definition if you want to, and that's that. Um, but what you can do here is, um, you know, um, if you look at the triggers, you can do it manually, continuously. But here you can see it's linked to the build definition. So it will take the artifacts that come out of that build definition and use it. You can use them in your, your release. Um, and here you have the extra column um, where you can create environments. So here it's just hockey app, but one other could be, uh, I could clone, clone this one if I want to, but I'm going to create a new one. Um, not very useful templates here, so I'm going to use an empty one. Um, and here you can see it already asks me about, okay, um, upfront, do you want to automatically approve or do you want to do it by specific users? My good friend Ben, he can say, okay, it looks good. Um, and you can also automatically de trigger it, uh, a deployment. So you can have it approved so uh, it's ready for deployment, but then there's also this step to actually deploy it. And here you also have the same concept of uh, hosted and, and, and the agents uh, which can deploy. But I think that a hosted agent can actually deploy a iOS app. It, it doesn't really rely on OS, uh, iOS specific things there. Um, um, no, if you look at the tasks here, it goes to the deploy tab automatically. And you could, if you want to, um, run PowerShell scripts. The, 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 the basic rule of thumb is that anything that has a command line, you can, uh, you can execute from uh, automatic building. So you can do copy files. You can do whatever you want. Uh, you can do SSH. You can do Windows machine file copy. Um, but you have to make sure that VSDS can reach those machines. So if you're using VSDS, that's probably not what you want. You don't want it. Uh, to 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 turn down your firewall and let VSDS in or or something like that. So you can do it, but yeah, you can do FTP or you can use a on-premise build agent maybe to that that has access with inside your network. So there there's possibility. Um, so right now it goes to Hakia, but imagine that I would create a new one. I was doing that empty already. It doesn't really matter. And here you have another environment in which you can add more steps. Um, so nothing fancy here. But you can assign some approvers. Um, and you can say, OK, I want to approve it up front or after um, the specific users again. But there are some more options. You can also do it in a sequential order. You can do it in any order. So they just have to approve it all. Or you can say, okay, first uh, Ben has to do it, and then Stephen has to. Oh, he's in there as well. Uh, he has to do it. So first Ben says okay, then Stephen says no, and then I can deploy. Um, or you can say any one user. So whichever one comes first says okay, uh, you can do it, and then you can do it. Um, here again, you can use variables. You can use some conditions automatically or or whatever. Um, but the power is is really in the the approvers and then you can say, okay, I've approved this one and now it goes back, it goes uh, forth to, to this one. Um, so you can step by step go through the environments. And like I said, you have here all tasks. Um, oh, this is new. Um, here and there are also some tests. So you can run a cloud-based load test if you want to and say, okay, it, it, it keeps load very well. So it can go on to the next environment and we can try some basic things like logging in. And if we can, then OK, we're, we're pretty confident then we can release this one to the production environment. Um, so this one's going to, to Hockey App. Let's talk a little bit about that. How am I on time? Overtime already. OK, great. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand it over. Yeah. How can for distributing? Okay, so you cannot just distribute apps. I think you can also distribute desktop apps with this. Uh, at least you can gather feedback from desktop apps with this. Like I said, it does distributing well, uh, especially if you use to Xamarin Insights, uh, which was way better at um, gathering feedback and events and, and tracing uh, users throughout your app. Um, but but Hockey App is, is, is getting there. Um, so we're also getting some symbolicated crash reports from that. You can get full stack traces and just see see what's going on in there without just having the users go, yeah, it doesn't work. Um, you can also use uh, feedback. If you use it to distribute apps uh, with Hockey App, it doesn't just allow the user to download it, but it also gets some kind of very basic mechanism of uh, uh, one text field uh, saying, uh, I liked it more in red. Uh, sent and you get that all in one one dashboard so you can have some unified way of collecting feedback for your apps um, you have some different target groups you can work with tags you can work with groups you can work with rights um, and you did also can can provide them to a very specific for uh, uh, type of groups uh, so you can provide one uh, user group with with that version and another with that so you can use some alpha or beta or, or inner ring whatever they call it Microsoft ways now um, sorry ah oh, it's preview everything's preview um, and no waiting for refill process that's specifically for iOS actually um, okay I would I can quickly show you that very quick so here is Hockey App, which is also free if you use no more than two apps. Um, you can see them here. Um, downside is that two apps is also per platform. So we have an Android one, we have an iPhone one. And that's it. <laughs> you, you have to pay from now on. This is one I've, I got invited to. So it's in here, but I can't do anything with that. Um, but this is actually being provided from here. You can see Hockey App. It has some app ID. Um, and by this, it knows that you have to, uh, it has to send it to this app here. Don't screw up my app, please. Uh, <laughs> I have something to do when I go. <laughs> oh, no. OK. Um, so here you see the iPhone and the Android one. And if I go in here. Um, then you can see all the 200 versions we have created already. Um, it has five devices in it. There is one uh, drawback from using iOS because you can get around the App Store, but Apple still wants to know uh, which devices you will be installing it on. Um, each device has a unique ID. You have to gather them, uh, put it in some kind of file, rebuild your app, and only then the user can install it. Um, that sucks um, because you're going to have to ask the user to to send that. Yeah, if you, you're asking your mother or your girlfriend to test for you, then they don't know how to get it. Um, luckily, Hockey App helps you with that. It can gather those unique IDs already. If they just uh, create an account with Hockey App, uh, it sends the account. Uh, I send them an invite first. They create an account, and I get the ID for free. Um, so I can include that, but I have to create a new build for iOS, and only then that new users can create uh, can use that version. Uh, yes. Um, I. Yeah, but it, I don't think that's really going to, that that's going into bytes. So that's not really counting. Um, and I think Apple had set some limit to 1,000 devices or something. Um, so that's just Apple. And you have some more things here, the crashes. Oh, no crashes. That's great. Uh, downloads, also zero. Oh. Um, and you can here see crash-free users per day. So you can you can see some nice things here. Um, there's 150 versions with one crash. Yes. And that was a 
extensive one as well. Um, normally, this looks nicer if you have the, the debug symbols uh, as well. Can you can get a? It doesn't look look it, but you can actually get a lot of information from this. Um, okay, so so there's 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 a lot of information in here, a lot of useful stuff. Check it out. Okay, so quickly, alternatives, alternatives. If you want to use VSTS, um, I think you should. But you know, maybe you're not a fan. You can. Um, you can use Bitrise for automatic building. Um, it actually has the same principles. It does everything VSTS does. You can build. You can run your unit tests. It also has uh, build steps. Uh, you can configure it like whatever you want. I would show it, but Fi doesn't allow it. Um, so, and they also have some kind of marketplace. But I think they're all free. There's no pricing model there. Um, so you just go out, create your own steps. Also, there there are very useful, useless ones. Uh, you can get some quote of the day in your build logs. It's very fun or something. Uh, you can also send it to Test Cloud from there, send it to a hockey app. You can do everything. And they did actually add a Mac. So they have incorporated the Mac in cloud concept. Um, also, they, they provide it already for you. Um, and it's, it's also free to begin with. Um, I think you can, what's the limitation for Bitrise? I don't know. Check it out. Um, for Test Cloud, there's also an alternative. Uh, it's called Test Ferry. It's free up to 10 apps. Uh, I haven't actually used it, uh, but, but it seems promising from the outside. Um, they don't actually claim to run it on physical devices, so they're probably using emulators. Um, so results could be not as good as, as Test Cloud, but Test Cloud is fairly pricey. That starts at like $100 a month, I think. And then you get one hour per day. Um, so it's, it's, it's pricey. Uh, so yeah, testing, who does it anyway? Uh, you can do uh, distribution with this as well, crash reporting, collect feedback. So it's basically test cloud and, and, and hockey app in one. So you can also use the App Store. You have to go through test flight. You, if you're, you are a developer, uh, you can get versions uh, to yourself as well. Um, if you want to use the beta testing, so to external users, you would have to go through the review process. Uh, there is one little trick, pro tip. If you use, uh, just update the minor uh, version on your app, then it will ask you like, hey, are there any big changes in this version? You say no, and then it goes right through. So remember that. Um, the just here is that you can go right from production to test. So if your app goes right in tests, you know it, it, it went well through the App Store, et cetera, and you can say, OK, now I want to go to production. You have to provide a shitload of screenshots and that kind of stuff. But you can go to production from right there. Um, if you do it through Hockey App, you would have to make another build, provide it to the uh, App Store, and, and do everything like again. Um, it doesn't have any feedback collection. It does provide it to the user, and then you have to provide some email address or something to gather the feedback if you want to. And there's no user usage statistics at all. I think you can see uh, which user had do has downloaded it or which didn't, and that's it. Um, for Android, there's the Play Store. Um, also, you can push right to production from test there. Um, they're a little more open about testing with externals. You can just you only have to add the uh, Google IDs to, to some uh, list, and then they can uh, test it. Uh, like I mentioned, they have some cool A-B testing uh, method in place, uh, free of charge. And it goes through the normal Play Store, which is kind of a disadvantage, because uh, with Apple, you have this separate App Store, beta App Store with test flight. So if for any reason you want to delete the beta app and you want to go back to the production app, you just go to the App Store and download it there. Um, with Google, I think you can't. You, you're stuck with the, the beta version. That's the only one you can get from the App Store. It's just provided to you in the normal Play Store, and that's it. Or maybe I'm overlooking something. Does it show that I'm an iOS fan? Okay. Um, so there are some things I've learned. Implementing is an evolving process. Like I said, we implemented the first thing, and we were going like, ah, oh, yes, we can create versions all the time. It's not what you want. Really soon. So you're going to start out small. And before your build is even succeeding on an external machine, you're going to have a 
go through a couple of times, you're going to through the logs and thinking, oh my god, I have to look this up on Stack Overflow again, and no idea what's going on. So you're going to have a few runs and a few hours of head scratching before you get it right. Um, also, like I mentioned before, Hockey App isn't Xamarin Insights yet. Um, they're getting it into uh, up to par with each other uh, feature-wise. Uh, Xamarin Insights is way better at uh, getting statistics. Uh, Test Cloud is awesome here. Yeah. So I'll get, quickly go into Insights. Oh my god. Best things happen in two minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have to find another one. Now. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's in your bag now. So. Okay. Um, so here we have some 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 apps with Xamarin Insights. Let's take one with some nice numbers in it. Um, here you can see 99.9 .9 crash free users. Yay! Uh, latest crash one day. Oh. But here you can also see uh, all the users. So this app is about collecting trash in our local region, and here we can find all the users based on. Um, um, postal code and, and house number. So I can just, if someone has a problem, okay, just give me this data and I can, okay, click here. I can actually see this is a, has a green button. So it's in session right now. They're using our app right now. Cool. Um, you can see which devices they have been using it on. You can see how many sessions they had the past 30 days. They are really looking into their trash right here. Look <laughs> um, at these sessions. So these are all, oh my God, they have a lot of, Okay, um, and, and this, these are all events we have defined ourselves. So we can see, okay, uh, it has resumed. So it, the, the app was in the background, it, get, it got back. Um, uh, off all info was loaded, so that's trash, trash information, some general information. And then they have uh, some, some um, separation of trash. Um, don't really know the good word for it. Um, and they're looking into all kinds of different things that they can do to separate their trash. And I can, I can follow the user on whatever it's doing. So that's really cool. And also, if there's a problem somewhere in here, of course, I can find one because our software is awesome. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of has the same features, but it's, it's targeted. Uh, application Insights is more web-based, a little bit desktop-based. And this is really app-based. Yes, but this is going to disappear, so you can't sign up anymore. <laughs> but I'm just showing off right now. Uh, I don't think they have to cite it themselves. Part of this will go into Hockey App, and part of this will go into Application Insights, I think. But Application Insights and Hockey App will then do. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Only they know. <laughs> I, I can imagine because it does it does similar things. So um, okay, so so that's insights. But like I said, you can't sign up for it anymore, so that really sucks. Um, so you, now you are stuck with 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 Hockey App, which does all these things, but just a little less. Basically, it, what it does now is catch unhandled exceptions, uh, send you back the stack trace. And since like a month or so, you can also create this. This, uh... but it it's going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in a bit of limbo right now. I mean, it's 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 great. We can use insights for the, the the apps that. Well, actually, we can still add apps to insights because we bought it and and we can use it. But you can't sign up as a new user. So I can still add new apps to it, but it will and and eventually it will migrate into a hockey app. But it's a bit in between right now. Okay, some useful links. I'll write down. No, okay. Uh, the slides will be uh, <laughs> afterwards. So uh, the, the last few ones are a few uh, quick links to blog posts I did about this uh, same subject if you want to read back at home. And that's me again saying thank you for your attention. Thank you. And here we go, sir. This is for being 20 minutes over time. <laughs>
So I have to take some out and give back. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. We're going to go off the road out of the air. Keep going. Yeah. And uh, the drinks are sponsored by AK. Yeah. <laughs>